couple of quick things. This, the space that we're standing on right now, which is privately owned and privately operated, was once the home, my home, the homes of my neighbors, public street, public sidewalk. Eminent domain has taken that public access away from us. So eminent domain is not just about people's homes and businesses, it's about public space being turned into private space. Also, in this neighborhood, we were told that this project was needed to stem the tide of gentrification in central Brooklyn. This arena is a gentrifying machine. We are having small shop owners, small business owners pushed out because landlords are speculating on the boom times that they think this arena will bring, which we don't expect to happen. So the businesses in this area, while some are popping up, which would have popped up without this arena, the other businesses are suffering due to an increase, a huge increase in rents and being pushed out. Finally, just to reiterate, the first tower of 14 proposed and approved residential towers of 380 units, nine, nine will be affordable to Brooklyn families. That is pathetic. And if we are lucky, at best, by 2022, we will have 27 units affordable to Brooklyn families for a five billion dollar project subsidized to the hilt. This is unacceptable and it needs to change. The organizing sponsors of, of the events this week are demanding that we conduct a supplemental environmental impact state, statement as ordered by state court that is timely, transparent, truly impartial, impartial study of, of alternatives to the current Atlantic Yards plan and which includes meaningful measures to mitigate the project's negative impact. We need to adopt a new plan that prioritizes the creation of housing affordable to working families in Brooklyn. We need to bring in other developers to reduce project risk, create more living wage jobs, jobs and accelerate the delivery of the public benefits we were promised. We need to reform oversight of this project to represent the people of Brooklyn in decision making on a continuing basis so that Atlantic Yard's promises to the public are kept. And finally, state regulations under which development projects are approved need to change to ensure that local communities are guaranteed input and that local elected officials are guaranteed a vote before public subsidies are granted. This project, these vacant lots where the neighborhood once stood, this parking lot was approved by fiat. Not a single elected representative in the city or state of New York had an opportunity to vote on this $5 billion boondoggle. Thank you.